Hello. Today we're going to be creating a RetroWave kind of um, style graphic. Um, the main reason why I decided this would be the next tutorial, even though I said it would be the X-Wing uh, fighter, is because I had a request from a guy that um, seemed very interested in, in doing this grid. And he was a little bit concerned by the fact that um, currently, um, as of today at least, uh, Affinity Designer does not have um, perspective tool. So I promised him uh, I would come up with a way to do this kind of uh, typical 80s grid for the floor uh, in such a way that uh, it's not too complicated to create it. Uh, and so this is what I've done. So as I was creating it, I decided it would be nice just to do the complete typical synthway uh, graphic and this is what I've done and I think it's quite cool. So let's go for it. Let's start. The first thing we're going to be doing is creating a, a new document, command N or file a new document up here. I already created it, so I have it here and we're going to be creating first off the background. So we go like this. Well, I'm lucky enough as to have a gradient <laughs> that uh, suits exactly what I want. Uh, if you don't, which probably would be the case, <clears throat> sorry. You just um, pick the the, square, the rectangle tool, drag and drop, go to your gradient tool and select your um, your colors. I'm just click in here and select whatever you need. Okay, so I'm going to try and reproduce what I already have done for the other graphic. But it doesn't have to be exactly exactly the same. It's just about you know creating something very similar. So now that we have the background, we're gonna lock it so it doesn't get in the way like so okay and the next thing i'm going to be creating and just to go to the point which is uh it was the request it's gonna be the grid so i'm gonna pick again the square tool and i'm gonna drag like so okay i'm gonna change the color so it's easier to distinguish it from the background this is not a very clear color. Let's just do it like this. Okay, so we have the background and we have the this square. And what I thought is, okay, if we don't have a perspective tool, which ways could I just think of to do something similar? And I decided probably someone else has other methods. This one, I think it works pretty well for the job. So what I thought is I came here to the um, uh, primitive shapes and I pick the double star tool, okay? So I select it and I want to, uh, first off, I'm gonna just zoom out a little bit so it will be easier for me to work. So with this one selected, I'm going to drag it over the canvas like so, okay? Again, I'm gonna change the colors so things are clear for us to see. I'm gonna get rid of the stroke. Okay, so now I have this one, this uh, primitive shape. What I want to do is tweak it a little bit. So I click A for the sub select tool or node tool in Affinity Designer. And you see these little orange dots. Okay, that's gonna be um, my way to, to change the, the star. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is just pulling this one down to the very center like so. Okay, and I'm gonna be pulling this one up. So all of the points in the star, they are all the, the same length, okay? Okay, so I put it like so, and right now I have this star, which does not have a stroke, sorry, and what it has to have is a stroke and not a fill, okay. So we have it like so, and what I want to do next, <coughs> I'm sorry, <coughs> what I want to do next, it's increasing the number of uh, points from 5 to 12 first initially. Okay, so we make it 12. Let's see if I'm happy with the 12 of them. Yeah, I think I think it would work. I don't remember how many I put in the original file, but okay, so we have it like like this. I'm going to increase a little bit the the size of it, clicking shift, okay? So it just goes beyond the canvas a little bit more just like this okay i think this could work um i think i'm gonna put more points to it it's gonna be let's see 18 and i think it 
does work. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is just I take these um, two shapes, the double star and the rectangle. I'm going to try just to center them. Opa, sorry, not like this, just horizontally. Okay, so I have it there right now. Yep. And the next thing is going to be I need this one. Of course, I don't need this, these points on, on, on the top side. I just want the ones on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is masking this shape inside this square. For that, what I can do is just selecting this one and with this insert inside selection um, selected. If you don't see it, okay, I will show you how to do it. You're going to have to come to view and customize toolbar. If you click in there, you're going to find them there. You just drag and drop, put it where, whatever you prefer. And so you can use them if you don't, if you don't have them in your um, menu at the moment. Okay. Because I'm not sure if this is something that uh, comes um, visible by default. I'm not sure. So, okay. To the point, um, I just click in there or I just drag from here like this. Okay. So as you can see, this one is nested inside this one. And now what we have is just the bottom side visible. Okay. Now I'm going to move it up a little bit. So my vanishing point is not visible like so clearly. <clears throat> a little bit more up. Okay. So we have this, this side more or less resolved. Now what I want to be doing is the horizontal lines for that. I'm going to come here and I'm going to click shift. It's just the pen tool and do a straight line. Okay. So we have it there. Now what we want to be doing is smart copying. So for that, we select this uh, segment and we click command J in the keyboard. And now we move it with the pointer tool. Like more or less like this. This is the distance I want. And now I keep, keep clicking Command J, Command J, 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 in such a way that all the lines are going to be in the same um, distance. Okay. Same gap for them. Okay. So I think we have a grid already. Now, maybe some tweaks apply, but the main thing is going to be transforming this floor into something that looks more like a floor. For that, I'm going to again pick the gradient tool let's choose our colors this is gonna be some kind of a dark always i want to go for the cold colors and this one is going to be something like maybe like this i will make some tweaks probably at the end you just pick the colors you prefer. If you don't like the ones I'm picking, you have other ideas in mind. That's fine too, of course. Okay. So we have this. Now I want to make again the background. I'm going to unlock it because I don't really fancy these colors so much. I think I want it something like this. And now tweaking it just a little bit. Just like this. Okay, remember you can just pull up and down and just, you know, make your changes. Looks so nice. I love this gradient tool. <laughs> it's just so comfortable. Okay, next thing. Next thing we're going to be doing. I will change this. Of course, I don't want the, the lines to be like this, but I want to put more colors in the canvas so I can see the overall effect and then I do my changes. Okay, so the next thing is going to be, if you remember, we had some mountains here. So I'm going to go for that. I grab the pen tool, I click P on my keyboard and I start just going uh, something like this. Okay, I'll just do, opa, I don't like that one. Like this, like this. Just don't worry too much about the last because the last uh, notes because that's gonna be not visible. So I'm gonna pick um, something darker than this um, and always a little bit. Uh, let's just go for something like this. Let's get rid of the stroke. 
Okay, we have it there. Now I'm going to command X and I'm going to click on the background in such a way that now I command V, paste. And because I was selecting this one, this new shape is going to be placed exactly on top of it. It's just, you know, a little trick that makes things faster. <laughs> could be stupid. I mean, you could, you could just be like this and click in here. I mean, sorry. Cut your shape, come here and now just paste, paste on top. I usually don't even bother going to the layers panel. <clears throat> what I do, as you saw, is just I cut my shape. I click on it, if it's unlocked, of, of course, and now I paste it and it's just placed there. This is just faster. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> yeah, we have this one. Now I'm going to copy, paste, I mean du duplicate it. And I'm going to take this one, which is the one that is on on the back. Okay, so I'm going to put this one here. I'm going to select this one and I'm going to change the color slightly to something. This one is going to be maybe a little bit warmer in color, just a little bit. Now, I don't want them to be so, you know, symmetrical. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to flip it horizontally and I'm going to apply some changes to it. So they don't look identical and, you know, too artificial, okay? I mean, not that they have to look like the most natural mountains, but, you know, just to give some rhythm to the graphic. <laughs> okay, so we have our second row. Yeah, and I'm going to apply a third one. So Command C, Command V, I have the third one. This one is the one in the bottom. Yeah, I cannot even see it now. <clears throat> so um, let me just check yeah <coughs> sorry about the coffin <clears throat> and uh, let's just put a third color I think I'm gonna go <clears throat> for something like even darker like this and again mm, I will be <clears throat> flipping it <clears throat> and making changes to it Okay, I mean, I guess you understand exactly what you have to do here. I don't have to delay too much, so I'm just gonna do this without spending much more time um, in you seeing how I'm going about this. This is just not so important. What I think it's really important is just having the colors now a little bit more accurate to what I am looking for uh, because I want to see the this nice Sierra of mountains, so, you know, I need this to be lighter in color. Something like this. <clears throat> okay, so, I just, okay. So what I want to do now is, I mean, we have three rows of mountains, but we don't want them to be exactly looking the same in terms of crisp mountains, you know. So what I'm going to be doing is applying slightly effect in here, Gaussian blur, very, very slight, like really, see what I put, 0 0.3, it's just nothing, I don't need any more. And for this one, maybe apply just, you know, dot one, 0 0.1, something like that. You may think it's not visible, but it is. <laughs> so at the end, everything counts. Okay. Good. So we have our mountains. Probably I will give them another go. You know, at some point, because I'm gonna get rid of this pig here. Maybe that one like that. And so we have one that is dramatically bigger <laughs> or bigger than, than the rest yeah and <clears throat> I'm also thinking <clears throat> maybe this floor is a little bit too high up but mm, mm, maybe it is so I'm gonna go to the layers panel and I'm gonna just okay so this is my course my course which is all these lines in there are not grouped with the rest. So that's something I want to do right now. 
I just group them. <clears throat> now I can move them down like I need. And now my mountains, I'm gonna go also a little bit down there. So yeah, so I can, you know, I can see a little bit better what, what's going on here. I like it better. You, you can do your vanishing point as high up as you want. That's up to you. I mean, this is just my decision. This is the way I did it. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna be doing is the sun, because we have this sun in here, in the horizon. <clears throat> so let's go for that one. <clears throat> Ellipse tool. So now we're gonna be picking, yeah, gradient, but obviously not this one. So let's go for something like more like, like I'm applying nothing here. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. So, yep. Let's just do something like, yeah, that was it. That was it. And I'm going to pull this one in here. Yeah, I like this color. It's quite nice. Summary. And at the same time, retro wave. <laughs> okay, so we have it here. Now I'm gonna command X. And again, what I said before, I click in, in the background and I paste it just what I want it to be. I will pull up a little bit the pink. Now I'm going to grab this um, the square tool. <clears throat> Is it square? Is it called rectangle tool? Okay. <clears throat> See me putting these stripes in here. Okay. So I'm gonna do another one. This one, I think it's gonna be thinner. And now a third one, which I'm gonna do a little bit bigger. Three of them, I select them. And now what I'm going to do is a Boolean operation. So I also select the circle like so. And I come here and say sub subtract. So this way, what I have is my sun perforated. No? Like this. Okay? I mean, it's quite easy to, to do, so I won't delay it anymore. I don't want this to be eternal. Okay, I'm going to add some uh, uh, stars on the background. Okay? So because I don't want to be creating all my stardust manually, and there are lots of, I mean, plenty of resources for free in the internet. I just went to Vectisi and I found these nice stars in here. So I'm going to grab one of the layers, which would be some of the stars, as you can see in here. And I'm going to paste it here on my canvas, something like this. Okay. I think I'm going to make them smaller because they are way too big for what I need. Something like this looks nicer. Now I'm going to duplicate them, flip them, just to, you know, fill the sky. Something like this. Yep. Maybe I'm gonna make this sun a little bit smaller. Okay. Mm hmm I still think something just yeah, better like that. Better like that. Okay. Okay. So we have the stars. Now they are a little bit too um, visible. So first off, we're going to group them. We're going to call them Stardust. Okay. Now Probably what I want to do is just apply some kind of blending mode. I'll just go try and see if any of the ones I see in here I like. Hot light, overlay, I don't know, just pick the one you prefer. Maybe I just make a mix of um, opacity and then, yeah, something like this maybe, okay. Um, it would be nice also to add some glowing stars in here, but you know, that's just applying effects in an outer glow, or whatever. I'm not gonna just do that now here because I want to, you know, have a date for finishing this. 
tutorial. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I take the ellipse tool and I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna make it narrower, like so. I'm gonna change the color for this to some mm, something like this for starters. Now I come to effects, click on Gaussian blur, and I go like this. And I'm also gonna apply an outer glow with some nice color that fits what I'm looking for, something like this. Now at some point I'm gonna have to change these um, lines because I uh, think they're too present. Maybe after placing here the text will be a nice moment so I see how it all together, how it works. Okay, so now text, let's just say, re Draw. I see nothing here, but I'm gonna make it bigger, mm, some bold, whatever. And I think I have this. What was the name? Uh, Elsa Aki. So it's called Laser Eighty Four. Okay. So I have my nice text in here, and now I want to, you know, make it glow, make it look like a real eighties graphic so let's just apply some nice gradients i have my swatches here i try this but i this is not what i'm looking for so yeah let's just go for some different colors like like this and hmm hmm let's reverse it mm, that's also cool no, but I think it would be better just to keep it in the blues. Yeah, something like this. And even maybe I add, I just don't understand why this is not consistent. I just don't get it. At some point, maybe, I don't know. Now, wow. And it's still, I'm clicking here and this one is not being highlighted. So, or I click in this one. <clears throat> And this one is the one highlighted. That, that's something I just don't see. Should be like that, but that's my opinion, so whatever. Um, okay. I don't, I don't think this is the blue I'm looking for. I want something more towards the... Something like this. Something like this. Or maybe I just need some... More, I see. Okay, something like that. Okay, and now we're gonna apply an outer glow again. <clears throat> it's white, but I want it. Some other color, something like this. I think it starts looking good. Yup, and I put it somewhere here, for example. And now I need to. Just do the other part of the text would be no yeah you see absolutely nothing but you will see it in a bit I hope but yeah there it goes so this text I just looked for some retro um, fonts and I found these ones and you just can look for this one or whatever fits better to what you're looking for okay um cannot really see this color like so so i'm gonna need to tweak some of the mountains so i can just you know relay on them in order to you know to be able to read the text better which is something that <clears throat> i only found out now as i go working okay so even i think this could be <clears throat> like this and like this and then mountains. Um, I want to mountains, mountains, because it's better if they are all together here. Okay, I think I can even do this one a little bit bigger. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with my throat, but God, not nice. 
Okay, so, I mean, you get the idea of what I'm trying to do, just make everything visible and readable. And now I just, not to delay anymore, I just copy paste this one here, make it a little bit bigger, something like this. And I say Velle, which is the wave. And I apply some color, something like, I'm gonna try and match this one, see if I like it. If I find it, hmm, maybe I want it a little bit more glowy. So I'll just move it to this. Yeah, I think it looks better like that. And now I think I'm going to apply some glow to it too. Why? Because I think it could look, look nice. Mm, like this. And like this. What about this one? I'm going to make it smaller, that one just a little bit smaller so it's more readable and yeah last thing just the little tweak for the um yeah for the grid so i'm gonna start with a double star i'm gonna just make it a little bit well i'm gonna play first i'm gonna try how let's see yeah What's that? So I'm applying something like a, a glow to it. Let's see how it looks. Wow. Not sure that's exactly the best of the effects I could apply. Yeah, and this is not good. So what I'm going to do is go back. I think not to waste much more time. The best thing would be just seeing what I did in here, which is, I mean, quite nice. So we go to effects and you see I applied an outer glow, 6.7 pixel radius, something like that. I'm going to copy it, which would be faster. Now that you see the settings, you can apply them for your graphic too. Okay, so I'm going to just copy. Yeah, very nice. And I'm going to apply that one too in these ones. Perfect. It looks quite good. And as you can see in here, these lines are a little bit thinner, which I think works very well maybe i just increase it slightly because i don't want the horizontal to be as present as, as the let's call it vertical line so but still maybe can accept a little bit more something like that doesn't look bad let's see this one nice nice there's something pattern this one and oh it is because i did something that i haven't done in the other one which is applying these donuts this donut i just did it for you to see see so it just gives kind of like an atmosphere in, to the graphic this is without and this is with so it creates this kind of like um shadow and so all the focuses where the lights are where the um all the graphic uh, the important part of the graphic is so i thought it was a nice idea it also looks good like this but anyway uh, let's apply it so that would be the last step we take the donut tool we just go like this i'm gonna zoom out so we have it like this we get rid of this stroke and we make it pitch dark something like this and now we're gonna play the effects Gaussian blur like so and now I can either play with the blending modes or with your opac opacity I will play with both of them and oh that's nice that's nice what a mix okay it's not exactly like the original I did before but again I tell you opa Again, I tell you, this is just a matter of, you know, spending some time thinking what is it exactly that you prefer for your graphic, you know? So that would be more or less it. Yo, like this, like this. Let's go for a hard light, maybe over there. Let's see, maybe it's too much. Let's see which one I used in here. I used, uh, what is the donut? Average. 
Okay, and Gaussian blur and nothing else. So, average. Let's see this average. How it looks in here. Average. There it goes. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, that's the benefits of spending a little bit more time doing things. <laughs> now I just remembered there is an important little thing I would like to um, add to the graphic. I'm going to lock this one. And the mountain is a little bit too dark. So what I did in the other graphic is to just create this kind of like a, you know, ellipse thing. And put this color, go like this. And this one, I'm going to put it in between the mountains. So it looks like uh, there's some lights and some ambience in there. Foggy like, you know. It looks better. Another one in here. Maybe I make it smaller. Maybe I even <clears throat> add a new one and I change the color to it. Something like this. You know, it gives some um, atmosphere to the whole. So. That's too much. And I'm gonna put it there. And I'm gonna, you know, don't like the color. Prefer, yeah, something like this. Even even blue would be nice. We wish something like this. We put it there. Okay, up to you with the color spot. That's the idea. So, you know, you have something more. with layers and depth, okay? Okay, so that was it. Um, this was the tutorial. I hope you liked it. Uh, I hope you learned something. If you have some doubts, just ask me and I will try just to help you out. Like uh, with this guy, he wanted to do the grid. I hope I helped you. And um, see you in the next tutorial, which would be sometime soon. Um, and subscribe just if you like it because I'm going to be uploading as much as I know as I can so <laughs> that's it thanks a lot see you bye kiss